for those who for didn't those with bad intent on occasion happen to stand beside the good the innocent or the underaged and in those circumstances could precision and be entirely guaranteed anyway they don't track children don't you understand anything hearing this the girl laughed a bitter cynical cackle at odds with her pale little face and bill peak made the mistake of being for a moment rather impressed but she was only imitating her elders as he was imitating his go home he said instead she set about burrowing her feet into the wet sand everyone's got a good angel and a bad angel she explained and if the, it's a bad angel that picks you out she pointed to a craft swooping low there's no escaping it you're done for he listened in wonderment of course he'd always known there were people who thought this way there was a module he did on them in sixth grade but he had never met anyone who really harbored what his anthroposoch teacher mr lynn called amnonist beliefs the girl sighed scooped up more handfuls of sand and added them to the two mounds that she made on top of her feet patting them down encasing herself up to the ankles meanwhile all around her bill peak's scene of fabulous chaos was frozen a minotaur sat in the lap of stony abe lincoln and a dozen carefully planted ieds waited awaited detonation he was impatient to return must advance he said pointing down the long stretch of beach but she held her hands up her hands she wanted pulling up he pulled standing she clung to him hugging his knees she he felt her face damp against his leg oh it's awful bad luck to miss elaine out melly's the one who the one knew where to go she's got the whole town up here she said tapping her temple making the boy smile memoried no one knows town like melly she'll say this used to be here or they knocked it down or the pu there was a pub here with a mark on the wall where the wa where the water rose she memoried every corner she's my friend some friend the boy remarked he succeeded in unpeeling the girl from his body and strode down the beach firefighting a gang of russian commandos as they parachuted into view alongside him scurrying shape ran sometimes a dog sometimes a droid sometimes a huddle of rats her voice runs out of it can i see bill peek disemboweled a fiery to his left do you have an augmenter no do you have a complimentary system no he knew he was being cruel but she was ruining his concentration he stopped running and split the visuals the better to stare her down any system no therefore no you can't jimmy kane had one he was a fellow of maud's her main fella he flew in and he flew out you never knew when he'd be flying in again he was a captain in the army he had an old one of them but it still worked he said it made her nicer to look at when they were doing it he was from nowhere too nowhere like you not for the first time the boy struck by the human mysteries of this world he was almost 15 almost a man and the greatest human mysteries of this world were striking him what with satisfying regularity as was correct for his stage of development from the pathways global institute prospectus as our students reach 10th grade they begin to gain insight into the great human mysteries of the of this world and a special sympathy for the locals the poor ideologues and all those who have chosen to limit their own human capital in a way that can be difficult at times for us to comprehend from the age of six months when he was first enrolled in the school he had hit he hit every mark that pathways expected of its pupils walking talking divesting monetizing programming programming augmenting and so it was all the more shocking to find himself face to face with an almost nine-year-old so absolutely blind so lost and so development developmentally debased this he indicated flexto 
from the beach with its turd castings and broken piers to the empty shell buildings and useless flood walls up to the hill where his father had hoped to expect him is nowhere. If you can't move, you're no one from nowhere. Capital must flow. This was the, mo the this last was the motto of his school, though she didn't need to know that. She needn't know that. Now, if you're asking me where I was born, the event of my birth occurred in Bangkok, but wherever I was born, I would remain a member of the Incipio Security Group, which employs my father, and within which I have the highest clearance. He was surprised by the extent of the pleasure this final outright lie gave him. It was like telling a story, but in a completely new way, a story that could not be verified or checked, and which only total innocence would accept. Only someone with no access to e of any kind. Never before had he met someone like this who can move only to, who could move only in tiny local spirals, a turd on the beach. Moved, the boy bent down and touched the girl gently on her face, and he did so. He had a hunch that he probably looked like the first prophet of some monotheistic religion. Bestowing his blessing on a recent convert, and upon rewatching the moment and finding this was so, he sent it out, both to Mr. Lin and his fellow Pathways bo boys, for peer review. It would surely count towards completion of Module 19, which emphasized empathy for the dispossessed. Where is it you want to go, my child? She lit up with gratitude. Her little hand gripped his, the last of her tears rolling into her mouth down her neck. St. Jude's, she cried, and she kept talking as he replayed the moment to himself and added a small note of exploratory context for Mr. Lin before he refocused on her stream of prattle. And, and I'll say goodbye to her and I'll kiss her on the face and nose, whatever they say about her. She was my own sister. I loved her and she was going to a better place. I don't care if she's stone cold in that church. I'll hold her. Not a church, the boy corrected. 14 Ware Street, built 1950, originally domestic property, situated on a floodplain, condemned for safety. Site of St. Jude's local outlier congregation. Has no official status. St. Jude's is where she'll be laid out, and she said, and squeezed his hand, and I'll kiss her no matter how cold she is. The boy shook his head and sighed. We're going in the same direction. Just follow me. No speaking. He put his fingers to his lips, and she tucked her chin into his neck, into her neck meekly, seeming to understand. Restarting, he flagged his, her effectively, transforming little Aggie Hanwell into a sidekick, his familiar, a sleek reddish fox. He was impressed by the perfect visual reconstruction of the original animal, apparently once common in this part of the world. Renamed Mistis, she provided cover for his left flank and mutely admired Bill Peake as he took the traitor vice president hostage and dragged him down the mall with a knife to his neck. After a spell, they came to the end of the beach, where the sand shaded, here the sand shaded into pebbles, and a rock, then a rocky cove, and barnacles held on furiously, where so much else had been washed away. Above their heads, the craft were finishing their sallies and clustered like bees, moving as one back to the landing at the encampment. Bill and his familiar were also nearing the end of their journey, moments away from kicking in the door to the Oval Office, where, if all went well, they would meet the president and be thanked for their efforts. But at the threshold, on accountability, unaccountably, Bill Peake's mind began to wander. Despite the many friends around the world watching, there was a certain amount of kudos granted to any boy who successfully met the president in good, if not record, time on his first run through. He found himself pausing to strike Mistis and wonder whether his father would revoke his AG after this trip. It had been a bribe and a sop in the first place. It was unregistered. Bill had wanted to stay on the Tokyo campus for the whole summer and then moved to Norway before tsunami season for a pleasant fall. His father had wanted him by his side here in the damp, unlit Greylands. An AG-12 was the compromise, but these later models were security risks, easily hacked, and the children of personnel were not meant to carry hackable devices. That's how much my father loves me, Bill Peake thought hopefully. 
That's how much he wants me around. Previously, the boy had believed that the greatest testament to love was the guarantee which he had all his life of total personal security. He could count on one hand the amount of times he'd met a local. Radicals were entirely unknown to him. He had never traveled by any mode of transport that held more than four people. But now, almost adult, he had a new thought, saw the matter in from a fresh perspective, which he hoped would impress Mr. Lind with its age-appropriate intersectionality. He rested against the Oval Office door, sent his thought to the whole Pathways family. Daring to risk personal security can be a sign of love, too. Feeling inspired, he split the visual in order to, pa to pause and once more appreciate the human mysteries of this world slash how far he'd come. He found he was resting, he found that he was resting on a slimy rock, his fingers tangled in the unclean hair follicles of Agatha, Agatha Hand Hanwell. She saw him looking at her. She said, are we there yet? The full weight of her innocence emboldened him. There were five minutes, they were five minutes from Ware Street. Wasn't that all the time he needed? No matter what lay beyond that door, it would be dispatched by Bill Peake, brutally, beautifully. He would step forward into his destiny. He would meet the president. He would shake the president's hand. Follow me. She was quick on the rocks, perhaps even a little quicker than he, moving on all fours like an animal. They took a right, a left, and Bill Peake slit many throats. The blood ran down the walls of the Oval Office and stained the presidential seal and at, and at the open windows, a crowd cheering of cheering anonymous well-wishers pressed in, at which point Mista strayed from him and rubbed herself along their bodies and stroked and petted in turn. So many people come to see your mod. Does the soul good. How are you, Aggie love? Bearing up? They took her from the sky. Boom, public depravity. I mean, I ask you. Come here, Ags, give us a hug. Who's that with her? Look, that's the little sis. Saw it all, poor thing. She's in the back room, child. You go straight through. You've got more, more right than anybody. All Pe Bill Peake knew is that many bodies were lying on the ground and a space was being made for him to approach. He stepped forward like a king. The president saluted him. The two men shook hands but the light was failing and then failed again. The celebrations were lost in infuriating darkness. The boy touched his temple, hot with rage. A low ceiling parlor came into view with this filthy window further shaded by a ragged neck curtain, the whole musty hobo lit by candles. He couldn't even extend an arm. There were people everywhere, local, offensive to the nose, to all the other, all other senses. He tried to locate Agatha Hanwell, but her precise coordinates were of no use here. She was packed deep into this crowd. He could no more get to her than to the moon. A fat man put a hand on his shoulder and asked, You in the right place, boy? A distressing female with few teeth said, Leave him be. Bill Peake felt himself being pushed forward deeper into the darkness. A song was being sung by human voices. And though each individual sang softly, when placed side by side like this, like rows of wheat in the wind, they formed a weird unity, heavy and light at the same time. Because I do not hope to turn again, because I do not hope. And one voice like being a, like a great beast moaning, a single craft carrying the right hardware could take out the lot of them, but they seemed to have no fear of that, swaying, singing.